Hi everyone and welcome to Insights. My name is Kevin McGarvey. I am an Associate Professor of Humanities at Cumberland County College. The college was recently ranked 29th best community college in the entire country by the Washington Monthly Magazine. It's a very influential publication and we're very proud of that ranking. We're proud too of our ESL program which stands for English as a Second Language. And today on the program we have two separate guests. The first segment we'll be talking to Associate Professor Don Forcinito who is the um, ESL coordinator. And then in the second segment of the program we'll be talking to Ms. Federica Russo who is the ESL lab facilitator. So, uh, Donald, it's great having you here. Thanks so much for, for joining us. Thank you for having me again. Um, that's right. You were here about two years ago, weren't you? Yeah, it's been about two years yeah. since the last time. And a lot of things have uh, taken place in the world of, of ESL. Yes, we've had some changes. Uh, before we get to that, Don, you are a local man made good. You actually grew up here. You, your roots are in Vineland. You're a Vineland High graduate? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Graduated uh, Vineland High School back in 1984. A mm -hmm. uh, number of years have been layered on top of that. Uh, but uh, 1984 I graduated and uh, after graduation I, I wasn't quite sure what I was, uh, what I w wanted to do. And I took some time off and uh, I worked different jobs, uh, got some life experience I like to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to go back to college. It was about 1990, 1991. I went back to school and I chose Cumberland and um, I really enjoyed Cumberland. I, so that would have made you a non-traditional student as we call them. You would have been about I guess 25, 26 at the time? Or? Yes, yeah, about yeah. that age. Yeah, so yeah, you're right, yes. Um, I, uh, I, I came into uh, classes, I started off part-time and then gradually worked my way to full-time and got focused on what I wanted to major in. When I first started, I had no idea what I wanted to major in, yeah. uh, but I, I, I know I enjoyed working with people, so I wanted to follow that theme. And I had some really good professors who, uh, who uh, guided me and helped me to focus on what I wanted to do. Uh, when I graduated Cumberland, I. Uh, I uh, transferred to Rutgers University in Camden, and so I drove back and forth to Camden from Vineland every single day of the week, and uh, I, uh, I, I became even more focused. That by that time, I knew I wanted to major in education, but I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to teach. I knew I liked English. I really enjoyed uh, writing, and I still do, and um, I uh, had a professor who taught uh, ESL courses, English as a Second Language courses. And it was a, a course that I needed as an elective. And uh, he, s he said, if you'd like to continue next semester, I'm offering some additional ESL courses. And he said, uh, you'll never know that could open the door for you someday for an education position teaching second language speakers. You never know. And sure enough, it did. I didn't know, and it did, uh, it did happen uh, eventually. Was he a very influential professor in other ways as well, his, his teaching methods? or He was. He was a very charismatic professor. He's very well spoken, uh, very well traveled. He had traveled around the world. Um, he uh, he had a lot of experiences and a lot of um, a lot of insight that he gave to education, gave us as education majors. And uh, I've, I, I I really enjoyed his teaching style. He was very personable. Uh, he was willing to give of his time, and so uh, I think that encouraged a lot of us to continue taking his other classes that he offered. And uh, I graduated and ended up with a certificate in ESL for the state of New Jersey, as, along with my education degree. Mm -hmm. To go back to the Cumberland part, that's one of the great things about Cumberland. Uh, we have a lot of students who are bright and smart and motivated and really don't quite know what to do with all of that energy and enthusiasm. Yes. And we're pretty good at, at helping them sort that out. Um, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I've, I've, I've mentioned on the show before, I, I didn't start college until I was 28. And mm. I had no idea what I was going to do either. Mm -hmm. And I had one English professor. Um, and I remember listening to him and thinking, that's what I want to do. And it was a tra you know, really a transformative sure. you know, moment. And yeah. I'm so happy that that happened. I'm, ha I'm happy it happened for you as well, the way that it did. Yeah, so you can actually look back and point to that one Absolutely. instance. That, yeah. that moment, that semester. <coughs> that, mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you, you got your degree from Rutgers. Correct, yes. And then you came here and you started, you were tutoring here for a couple of years, correct? Yes, uh, actually I was, um, I was a substitute teacher and a long-term substitute teacher in the Vineland District and I was also working here as a tutor and uh, I became an adjunct. I was teaching uh, what was then called English 100, Fundamentals of, of English course. Right. And I taught that for uh, quite a few semesters and um, the uh, ESL coordinator at the time, uh, there was, well there was a position that was open for the coordinatorship that uh, I was asked to fill in temporarily and 
the, the rest is history. I was uh, I had the right credentials at the right time, and it was just a wonderful experience of timing for me, uh, mm -hmm. having the right degree and the right credentials. And uh, as they say, the rest is, is history. I, I remember that you were here, you were a tutor, you were teaching English 100, what we called fundamentals of English, as you said. Right. And I remember you finishing your masters. I remember how happy you were when you when you did oh, that. Yes. Yes. Um, a lot of changes since then. Now you uh, you were recently promoted to associate professor. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much um, for that. Thank you. And um, you're the coordinator of the ESL program. And we live in a, an extremely diverse county. We live in an extremely diverse county. I, I can't imagine that there's a county in New Jersey that has uh, as many uh, nationalities represented in it as we do, mm -hmm. uh, has as many languages spoken in it as we do. And we have this ESL program at the college. Describe it, please, for, for people who really don't know anything at all about it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, the, the ESL program is a pre-college level program. Uh, it's intended to prepare students for college level instruction. Uh, but we do have some students who take courses who just want to take uh, to learn a little bit of English for personal reasons, uh, whether it's uh, work-related reasons or for their families or, or whatnot. So uh, a, a number, a percentage of our students don't go on into college level courses. But those who do, that's the primary intent, to prepare them for uh, their writing courses uh, to prepare them for college level reading uh, to to hone their listening skills so that they're able to understand what's uh, the, the, the instructors words in the courses uh, it's a, f a four level program and uh, students when they uh, when they come to the college they take a placement assessment and that assessment measures their is that, is that the same test that that native English speakers t take as well? It, it's actually not. AccuPlacer is the test that the uh, the general uh, population of students take. Now ESL students, if they identify themselves and they they, they feel that they're a, a, at a higher level, almost at a native speaking level, they can take the AccuPlacer. But we have a test called the Compass ESL test that students take. It's it's similar to the AccuPlacer, but it's, it's designed more for a second language population of students uh, and that test can accurately measure uh, where the students are placed uh, level one all the way through level four and it'll measure the listening abilities and also reading scores and uh, writing scores grammar scores so it helps us it's it's an it's an aid we say to placing the students in the class and students write an essay just like they would on the AccuPlacer as well and you say there's four levels level one through four correct I'm going to assume that some students you get speak very little English at all and some are nearly fluent and correct additional help could you describe the the different levels how that how that works sure sure we like you said we have students of, of all levels we have students uh, who who are, are have a very very rudimentary basic understanding of English they would more than likely test into one of the first couple of levels and then we do have some students who perhaps they've been living here for a number of years uh, they've interacted maybe in their jobs with English speakers maybe they uh, they transferred and they went to school here uh, high school uh -huh. and uh, maybe had a year or two of high school so they've learned a bit of English, but it's still not quite enough to help them be successful, for them to be as successful as they could be at the college level. Mm -hmm. So uh, the test is very, very important because, um, and, and I really shouldn't use the word test, it's a placement assessment or a placement instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, the second you the, use the word test, there's that uh, connotation of failure, which is not the case. So it's a, a placement assessment. Oh yes, the anxiety, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so we, um, we, we, uh, we use that assessment and that instrument is very accurate to help us to place the students but uh, but you're correct there uh, I mean the program enables students who would otherwise not have an avenue into college level courses or, or into the quote unquote mainstream of American society it gives them an opportunity to do that um, in addition to the classes I mean there's the population that we have here at the college uh, the ESL students uh, I know you'll be talking about this later with uh, Miss Russo but the uh, the ESL Center ESL foreign language center students gather there it's not only a tutoring center but it's a, 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 a cultural center where the students are able to discuss and talk about their lives and such so it, it really really helps to bring students out of their shelves and give them that opportunity and that avenue to to attend college and if they decide not to attend college it still is is uh, again it's that avenue to bring them out of their shelves to bring them more into the into the mainstream make them feel more welcome in society I can only imagine the the success stories that you have the some of the pride that you felt watching your students go through the levels and yes you know, Oh yes, can, yeah, my. Can you can you think can you think of one or two that just have stayed in your heart? They oh sure, sure. There have been there have been students who uh, I I think the the, the students uh, when I 
when I first arrived, or close to the time when I first arrived, when I first started. Uh, of course, those students uh, would have been in the ESL program when I first started, and then several years later they graduated. And uh, it was, um, it was a, a, a very emotional moment to see them walk across the stage and to, to come over to me or point me out and uh -huh. give me a hug, of which I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't require that. But it was, it was just so nice to see them earn that degree and, and get to the, you know, the fruition of what they had planned to do. It was very nice. I, I think that's something that uh, a lot of teachers have in common. You know, I, I love going to graduation. I love, yes. I love when that student receives, you know, her, her, her uh, certificate, her, her diploma, and it's someone that you've been working with for 12 or 13 or 14 years yes. or so. She's been working at this thing forever and, mm -hmm. you know, the joy, the pride of and it all. You can see, you know just how much it means to that student. I mean, it's life-changing. It really is. Coming to the college and getting a degree is life-changing. There are people out there right now watching us um, thinking, hey, this sounds very interesting I, I, and I don't know how to go about it. How do students register for the ESL program? How do they get in touch with you and, and, and mm -hmm. Federica? Well, the, uh, reg the initial uh, registration is the same as for, for all students. Uh, there's an online application at the uh, college's website. Uh, completing the college application, and there's, that's free, there's no charge for that. Uh, students then uh, report to take the placement exam. The placement exam is uh, basically currently a, a walk-in basis. Students walk in and take the test, uh, and it's given, it's given throughout the week, Monday through uh, Friday, and I believe there are some Saturday appointments at certain times of the year. Uh, after the students take the test, uh, the reports, the scores are sent to myself uh, or to one of the other ESL advisors. We have several on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, place a phone call to the students. We contact them and bring them, uh, bring them in for an appointment and we help them choose their classes. We're registering right now, as a matter of fact, for the fall semester. But that, that, that initial uh, movement, they should just call the college's main number and say, I'm, in, I'm interested in talking to someone about the ESL program. Sure, I have students who, who enter the college that way as well. Some people just, uh, they call, they'll, they'll, they'll speak with me, they'll leave a message, they'll send me an email, mm -hmm. uh, just asking for information about the program, either for themselves or perhaps they have a relative, uh, someone who may be coming from another country, and they just want to get some information. Uh, so those students identify themselves already. Uh, some students uh, don't self-identify. Uh, they'll, they'll take a test and uh, based on the results of the AccuPlacer, they might be referred to either me or to one of our other advisors on campus. And then we'll offer ESL services to those students and perhaps even ESL courses if it's appropriate for them. Now at Cumberland County College, we really do all uh, work hard at keeping costs down, keeping tuition down. Mm. Um, our, our ESL students, um, can they get some sort of financial aid? For these classes? Yes, uh, ESL uh, courses are eligible for financial aid the same way that any other courses would be. Uh, the uh, students uh, receive a 30 credit limit though on ESL classes so they can use up to 30 credits which is more than enough to finish the program. Uh, so they would apply for financial aid uh, online uh, just like uh, any other student, the same process and uh, whatever information that they've supplied on their uh, tax forms, their W-2 forms uh, from that current year's taxes, mm -hmm. they would use that monetary information to complete the online application. That whole process after the application is completed takes approximately three to five weeks and the results are sent to Cumberland County College. The student would in include Cumberland County College in the uh, application. Uh, the report would be sent to Cumberland and then the student is contacted and notified if they're eligible or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always good to, to do that early. Uh, right now is a good time for the fall semester to get that application uh, processed. Don, we have 30 seconds left. Um, mm -hmm to people out there watching us right now thinking about this um, and not sure what to do, what, what, what would you tell them? I think the first step is always the hardest step in anything. Um, when you're, you're standing looking up at the mountain and it looks like it's just this monster that you have to conquer, it all starts with the first step. And I know that sounds cliche, but uh, in my life that's proven to be true and I, I, I see that in the students semester after semester. Uh, don't be embarrassed, don't be shy. Uh, even if you've been here for a number of years and you haven't had an opportunity to take English classes or to, to, to get out into the community and speak English, take that first step and, and give it a try. It's, it's, it's a, it's it's going to be a great rewarding experience. Thank you so much. You. We will return in a moment with Ms. Federica Russo and she is the lab coordinator for the ESL program. Stick around. Hi, I'm Larry Kane in the Cumberland Mall. All the best to everybody at Cumberland County Community College. 
your success begins there. Hi everyone and thanks for sticking around for the second half of Insights. My name is Kevin McGarvey. During the first segment of the program, we had Professor Don Forsenito, who is the uh, coordinator of the ESL program at Cumberland County College. And for the second segment, I'm real happy to uh, introduce to you Ms. Federica Russo, who is the ESL lab facilitator. And we're going to be talking about the ESL lab and uh, how important it is here on our campus and for the for the entire region. Federica, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me here. Um, Federica, what's your what's your background? I know that you were born in Naples, Italy, Italy and yes. you go back and forth between Naples and here, but tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, I uh, attended Italian school until I was 18, so I attended uh, Liceo delle Scienze Sociali in Monte di Procida. Say that again. <laughs> Liceo delle Scienze Sociali in Monte di Procida, okay, which is a high it. school I got it that time. in my hometown. And when I was 18, I decided to move back here because my dad has always lived in New Jersey, first in Trenton and now in Bridgeton. And I ended up at Cumberland County College where I studied um, liberal arts Spanish and I graduated in 2013. Now I'm studying uh, at Thomas Edison State College in Trenton, New Jersey, and I'm taking my two cla final classes before my bachelor degree in foreign languages. And how many languages do you speak? I speak four languages, three of which fluently, which are Italian, English, Spanish. I also know French, and I'm starting to study Japanese. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes. This is something that I, I, I wonder about all the time. Do some people have more of an ability to learn a language than others? Is, is this something innate? How do you, how do you yes, see that? Yes, yes and no, because of course somebody, you know, um, are born, I mean, is born with a talent with, for languages, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible for the other people to learn languages, right. which is really important and essential in our world, you know, in a globalized world today. So yes, everybody should, the one they are born with uh, foreign languages talent and the one they are not born with that to study foreign languages anyway. Okay, I'm one of those that wasn't born with that. I took Spanish for forever, all through junior high and high school and college. And I was, I was telling you before the program, I spent a lot of time in Mexico. And the way that I learned Spanish is to watch a movie, an American movie on mm -hmm. television in Mexico that has the Spanish subtitles. And that way I can see the actor using present tense or past tense and see it on the screen and that really makes a difference for me and I learned more in two hours watching a movie than I think I did in all those years of, of school. Well regarding United States uh, I'm currently writing my liberal art capstone and my uh, topic is of course foreign languages uh -huh. and in my research paper I'm finding out that in the United States there is you know there are people who talks about a, a linguistic crisis meaning that um, people do not want to learn foreign languages and colleges and institutions do not really encourage people to learn foreign languages. There are a Stanford University professor who is really also the president of the Modern Language Society and he said that he asked himself can we afford to teach foreign languages and then he answered himself he was like we cannot afford not to. Mm -hmm. So. What I see here in the United States that people do not start to take foreign languages from elementary school, while in the rest of the world, myself included, I started to speak uh, to study English as my second language in Italy while ele in elementary school. So how, how old were you when you, when you started taking English? Classes. I got, I guess, five or six years old. Five or six. What, what, what we, what we would consider to be kindergarten, first grade here. And then I studied um, English and French in high school, I see. and I started to study Spanish here. I see. Mm -hmm. And it's really important. I mean, y yes. as as you said before, we in the humanities see that all the time. We see art classes getting 
cut when there's a budgetary oh, yes. squeeze. We see music disappearing and languages as well. Unfortunately, to be yes. The first to go. Um, until this point in my research, I, I found out that whenever there are budget and fundings to cut, unfortunately, majors, minors, and activities related to foreign languages are the first one who are canceled and eliminated. And it is a, a shame because compared to the rest of the development uh, countries, United States students and Americans in general fall beyond in, in foreign languages. So what would you say to those administrators out there who just might be watching us right now? and they've got these budgetary concerns and they're trying to figure out how to how Not to, to cut the foreign money. languages. Keep no. the languages. Yes, because it is really important in the world we live today. Because uh, in every field that I can think of, it is like a plus to speak a foreign language. And people, uh, people actually are paid more to sp you know, if they speak foreign languages, at least one. Describe to us what the ESL lab is. Tell us all about it. Tell us about a typical day there. What goes on? Yeah, the ESL is a resource center for the ESL student. Uh, was language is not was first language is not English, but also for the foreign language students who are taking either Spanish, Italian, or, or French. So people, act, uh, student come to the lab, they sign in, and the most important thing about the lab is that we do not only help students academically with their homework or assignments, we help them with their, um, on a social level, with their introduction to the American lifestyle and American school system. Because we have to keep in mind that we have roughly 40, 40 students coming from more than 10 countries, different countries in the world. So they come from very different realities and they come here and they might feel lost. So in the ESL lab, we help them, we introduce them to the American life, we help them build their resume, we help them to fill out job applications, we also help them with their um, citizenship exam if they have to. Mm -hmm. So we act like more than tutors as mentor and moral coaches for them. Moral coaches. Mm -hmm. So it's the farthest thing from formal, in other words. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when, when people hear the word uh, lab, I guess they, they might think of compartments where you're sitting there with headphones on in your, your own little world, mm -mm. and it's the farthest thing from that. I know the time that I came to visit you a few weeks ago, you guys had some pizzas on the table, yes. and there were people all over the place, and everybody looked very happy. Yeah. They were really happy. We they try. were all happy to be there. We try. Yeah. And other students come there to, to use Rosetta Stone because we have eight computers, each of which has uh, Rosetta Stone software. We have all the levels of English and two levels of Spanish, and it's completely free for the students. And they can come in um, there anytime to, to use it. And you've told me about, you've talked to me about Rosetta Stone before. Yes. You, you really believe in it. Yes, I used Rosetta Stone when I was clapping French and combined with a grammar book and you know, study hard, it, hel it helps, especially with the vocabulary and the uh, pronunciation skills. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the, to the lab a second. Um, mm -hmm. what's, a, what's a typical day like there? You say that, you said it's informal, people come there. You told me that you help people fill out forms and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do tax returns and yes. things like that. Sometimes it happens. Is it, is it, it it's, a, again, fun, I hate to use that word again, but it's, it's yes. very informal they, and... Students feel comfortable because they come from different realities. They might feel lost. American students many times take it for granted to, you know, to go to a tutoring center. You know, they do their homework and they're fine. Right. But somebody who comes from Ukraine or Nicaragua might feel lost. So we help them with that. And I have a successful story about this. Our one of our student, um, Kian Kwan from South Korea, she was taking ESL classes last semester, and she used to come to the lab every day. Then she had to move with her family in another part of New Jersey, and now she she calls us and she said that she missed the ESL lab because in other part of New Jersey they don't have ESL labs. That's that's a great story, and that leads to my next question as well. Are we unique? Does every college have an ESL program and ESL labs? As for the ESL programs, there are colleges who offer ESL pr programs, but around the area, I think we are the only one who have a ESL lab. Hmm. And the students, I would imagine, really enrich each other. And you say you have uh, students from 10 different nationalities mm -hmm. there. I can imagine that just being together, someone from Korea with someone from Mexico with yes. someone from Ukraine. They help each other a lot and they enrich each other. 
including the tutor and me, uh -huh. because I never go home one day without a new thing that I've learned from my students. So they help me as much as I learned that. I mean, I help them. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it take to be a tutor? How many how many tutors do you have, first of all? Uh, this semester we have five tutors, uh -huh. and you know, a degree is not necessary. We have uh, tutors that are student, Cumberland County College student, and we have other tutors who are who have their master's or bachelor degree. So of course, foreign languages are you know skills that everybody looks for, but it doesn't take that much to be a tutor in the ESL. What do you look for in a tutor? Are you looking at a person's personality and demeanor as much as yes, his or her? Of course, they have skills? to be open-minded because we we deal with people from different cultures, so they have to be open-minded. I I like to work with people who take their job seriously. What would you like to have in the lab that you don't have? Um, in case those people out there with the money <laughs> happen to be watching or listening. Maybe right now. new computer software because we have old ones. Uh -huh. So you know. Our Rosetta Stone software could work faster and maybe more visibility because I, I know that ESL students and Spanish students know about the ESL lab, but foreign language students as uh, the one who takes French or Italian, most of them know, don't know that we, that we offer this service and that it's free. So more visibility. You told me before that you don't see yourself as a, as a teacher, which no. surprises me because you have that I've known you for a number of years, and I know how much pride you get watching people succeed. And yet you don't really want to teach, do you? Uh, no, I started. I started here. I mean, uh, I was a student when I started working at the ESL lab, and I started as a Spanish tutor. Then I became an ESL tutor, and recently I've became the ESL facilitator, which was really unexpected. So I I want to work here for a few years now, and then what I see. After that is working for immigration or in, in, a, in an American embassy around the world. What kind of challenges do you have on a, on a daily basis? You mentioned the, the young woman from South Korea that you're so proud of that, that mm -hmm. called you. What, what are the challenges that you face in, in the lab? Cultural diversity can be a beautiful thing, but it, you know, it is a, a, a thing that you, people need to be careful about because you don't know when you are um, disrespecting a value or tradition in another society. So I always try to be delicate and you know soft with my students because I don't want to offend anybody. So basically, my daily my daily challenge is that to to be as open-minded as possible because we have people from Mexico and Mexico, as you said. Uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, we have people from Africa, we have people from Turkey, Ukraine. So it's a very it's a very diverse environment and somebody, you know, we need to be careful with that. Professor Forcinito yes. mentioned that there's levels one through four. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same setup with the lab? Do you have students that really speak very little English? Yes. And they're they're mingling and um, eating pizza and talking with you with students who are nearly fluent. Yeah, it is very correct, and we try to group um, people at the same in the same level to one with one tutor and people on the different uh, they speak more more English with another tutor. We try not to mix different levels because um, the tutor and the help that they need, it's different. So. But you do like to get people mixed from all different nationalities. Oh, yes, because you, you never know who, who's coming and what time they're coming because each of them works. So they, come, they have different availabilities. So one of my tasks is to match the best tutor with the, with the, with the availability of, of a student. So. Federica, we're out of time, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being here at the ESL Lab. Just call the main number, Cumberland County College, and ask for Federica Russo or Professor Don Forcinito. Federica, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me here. My name is Kevin McGarvey. Thanks so much for watching Insights. We'll see you next time.